Today we're talking about machine learning. What is it and how will it change our lives for the better? To do this, I have invited Kasim once again. Hello, Kasim. Hello. All right. So since we all know who Kasim is, let's jump right in. How is learning different than inputting? Hmm. Okay, yeah, so um, interesting questions. I think uh, machine learning in the simplest form would be, um, I think people generally confuse machine learning with AI. So mm -hmm. I think AI is something that can act on its own accord and has some sort of intelligence, even if it is a very specialized or specific intelligence. And I think machine learning uh, needs something from humans or another machine to give it so that it can make a prediction uh, about something else. Um, so a really good example of that would be an, an ice cream shop. So for example, let's say I wanted to open an ice cream shop, but I'm not sure about what types of flavors I want to sell, how much money I'm going to make, uh, how the temperature of the day affects my sale price. Well, I could use machine learning, uh, supervised machine learning, to solve this problem. So I could find other data from other ice cream shops and see what their sales are like on different days of the year, where it might have been hotter or colder, see if the, the range of flavors affected sales, affected price, see the ideal price point for what I should set my ice creams at. And using this data, I can get a really good idea of what I should do for my own ice cream shop. And I think that's sort of what machine learning is at its most basic idea, is helping people find the most optimal or efficient way to do a task or do something. Hearing that reminds me of um this documentary that I watched about 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. there are buttons on the cash register. So after they input all the price and the item, the cashier will press the button that says teen, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Mm -hmm. So of course, it's an estimate of what the customer sort of looked like. Mm -hmm. And in time, after a month, they'll have an estimate of, or they have an exact count of how many people of 20s, people of 30s have visited. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, the headquarter will supply with the items that are most suitable for the people in 20s and 30s and 50s, mm -hmm. right? So um, machine learning, I guess, is something along that line, maybe? Yeah, exactly. So that's a really good example. Um, and that's what we would call customer forecasting in mm -hmm. machine learning. Mm -hmm. So machine learning would take the input, which would be the customer age or uh, maybe even how rich the area is or maybe even the part of the country that the store is in. And they would use those inputs uh, as a way to determine uh, what kind of flavors the customer might like. And that would be called the prediction in this case. I heard that there are different kinds of learning in machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, could you amplify on that? Yeah, so there's, um, there's three main types of learning in machine learning. There is uh, supervised, and a really good example of supervised would be the, the ice cream example I gave you, and also the 7-Eleven uh, right, or even Baskin and Robbins. These would be really good examples of supervised learning. Uh, and then we have unsupervised learning. And uh, let's say, for example, I worked in a hospital, and I had lots of information about my, my patient. So I could have their age, uh, if they're a male or female, whether they're a smoker, if they have any family history of diseases, all these different types of inputs, we'd call them. Um, but I don't want to look at necessarily tens of thousands of rows of data and find the individual link myself. So I would use something called unsupervised learning. Um, and a really type of popular unsupervised learning is called k-means clustering, which basically finds little segments or little pockets of data that are linked together. So of course we know that if you smoke, there's a higher chance of lung cancer. If you eat you know, fried food, there's a higher chance of coronary heart disease. But there might be plenty of other lifestyle choices that might affect other diseases that we don't know about. And that's what unsupervised learning would be useful. And the last one we have is reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning would be really useful in things like games. So chess, or I think the Korean game, I think it's called... Game of Go. Yeah, right, the Game of Go. Um, so the the decisions that the machine would make would all be based on, is this move going to take me closer to victory? And it works in a reward and punishment system. So if this machine plays 10,000 games against itself, and then out of 6,000, out of 10,000 games, it wins 6,000, well, we would give it 6,000 reward points and then 4,000 punishment points. Then it would play another 10,000 games and over time, you'd expect this machine learning algorithm 
to get closer and closer and closer to beating itself maybe uh, 9,500 times out of 10,000 times. And that's what reinforcement learning essentially is. And it's interesting that you say playing against itself. Yeah, that's right. So that's one of the really big advantages of machine learning. So let's say, for example, a chess master, if he plays every day for 12 hours, he might be able to get maybe 20,000 games in his lifetime. But a machine could play that many games in a matter of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, depending on how much uh, uh, computation okay. power we have. So it has more experience <laughs> to learn against itself. And it also has all of the chess masters' uh, games and archives to learn against too. So not only is it taking what we already know about chess, all the strategies and tactics, but it's learning by playing itself multiple, multiple times. It sounds like a great change is coming. So let's start with jobs. What are mm -hmm. some jobs machine learning will affect? The first sort of jobs that machine learning will take would be highly repetitive jobs. If I worked in a, in a distribution center, a warehouse, and this warehouse or factory made clothes, well, I would have to hire three testers to make sure that all of my clothes don't have any discoloration, any rips, any stretch marks, and to make sure that the product I'm making is suitable for the customer. However, if we use machine learning, well, I could just have one camera that looks at uh, these clothes faster with a higher degree of accuracy than any human could possibly imagine. Um, and I wouldn't have to worry about this machine taking breaks, vacation, whether it's feeling bad or good. It would just do its job very consistently, 24 hours a day. Um, and it's actually a good thing for humans too, because that would allow us to get more creative jobs, things that we enjoy. I don't think anyone wakes up excited to look at, you know, thousands of pairs of jeans in the morning. Right. What about something creative, like a language class? Mm -hmm. How can it affect, I guess, me? We have a program called a ChatGBT, which is really good at natural language processing. In one of my classes yesterday, I, I actually gave this machine a list of my students' names, a list of the vocab I want them to practice, and a list of grammar points I want them to practice. And I asked it to make me a fictional story, including these words and these grammar points. And it actually made me a really good story that the kids really enjoyed. Mm. So I think even though the role of teacher might not be threatened just yet, I do think it can certainly help automate a lot of the tasks that are time consuming for teachers. So if there were, say, Hidak, Kasim, mm -hmm. Mire, my mm -hmm. daughter, Taegyun, my son, mm -hmm. and if we put monster, mm -hmm. it's going to create a story about that. Right, exactly, yeah. And if it was a story you didn't like, for example, you could also say, hey, can you include uh, that the monster ends up being defeated by my son and daughter? or whatever the plot you want it to be, you can give it that and it would make that story for you. And that's important to note because that means the machine has the ability to differentiate between nouns, verbs, mm -hmm. adjectives, mm -hmm. adverbs, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on what kind of words we put in, it will automatically discern which part of speech it will be using, mm -hmm. and then it will create a sentence that way. That's right, yeah, and it can also uh, it also has a memory, right? So it also right. builds on itself. So another thing that I did yesterday was, based off the story, I asked the machine to give me 10 reading comprehension questions based on the story. And it gave me some really inter interesting questions. And it generated these questions within maybe three or four seconds. And it would have taken me maybe five or six minutes to do that. So I think over the time, it will save people a lot of time um, <laughs> and definitely makes people's lives easier too. And that's something I got to learn. Yeah, right. <laughs> you also, um, in a pre-session, said something really interesting. Machine learning is the new literacy. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I think right now we're in a really interesting space um, between the time where we're developing these really uh, fascinating and powerful technologies um, to the point where we have them, but we're not using them in a professional setting or a personal setting just yet. There's still a bit of time before the world has to sort of catch up and get used to these ideas and get used to these tools. And I think a similar thing happened, I think it was around 200 years ago, where a lot of people weren't literate. They couldn't read, they couldn't write. Um, and it's because they didn't need to. A lot of them were farmers at that time. And only the high priests or kings or the royal family or very important officials could read or write. And I think just at that time, when people were making the switch from sort of farming to learning how to read and write, there probably was a really big push back then to say, hey, why do we need to do this thing? We're farmers, let's just stick to farming and sort of fighting the idea of change. Like we've always done things this way, why are we changing now? 
I think this, a similar thing will happen um, right now with data and machine learning and programming, whereas maybe people might think, oh, I don't need to learn programming or about machine learning because, well, that's only for machine learning engineers or programs or computer scientists or research scientists. But I think it's going to be beneficial for, for everyone to at least have a very basic understanding of programming or how machine learning, machine learning works. A bakery, for example, so a baker might say, well, why do I need machine learning in my life? If they were to implement machine learning, well, they could forecast what type of bread their customers might want based on the time of year, based on the season. So around Christmas, maybe people tend to gravitate more towards sweeter items. Uh, that is something machine learning could, could predict. It could also optimize recipes. It could also prevent waste so that we don't make too much bread because we know how many customers we're going to get in right, right, right. based on the data. So it could really help efficiency, uh, drive down costs, increase profits, and even save the baker some time, which is, you know, all of these are great points to have for a baker. Machine learning is happening. Although it's still, it's its initial stage, it's mm -hmm. still happening. What are some of the short-term and long-term consequences? Well, I think some of the short-term, uh, we are going to lose a lot of jobs. People are going to uh, be in very difficult situations financially. Um, I think we can see this now, like if we go to McDonald's now compared mm -hmm. to maybe 10 years ago, right, right. now we have those electronic kiosks. Um, that's an example of technology replacing us. And that isn't even machine learning, that's just technology replacing us. So imagine when we have a somewhat intelligent machine that can do a much more complicated task. Um, it's easy to see how anything that's repetitive, like someone who makes kimbap, for example, in a cafe, they could be automated fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you have copywriters, copywriters can now be automated, especially with the new tool I was just talking about. Um, a lot of these types of jobs are highly repetitive uh, and require you to do the same thing day in, day out. Those are the types of jobs that I think will be taken first. And those jobs is what require more creativity and are a little bit more robust, like doctors, lawyers, even teachers to some extent. Uh, I think those are jobs that will be safe for the time being, but maybe in the future we'll still need to um, prepare ourselves for you know, the eventual coming of machines taking over, taking over some jobs in our fields. So knowing all these, how can our students better prepare themselves for the future? I think you're in a really fortunate position because um, you have a lot of time to prepare for what's happening. So I think if you wanted to prepare, make sure you have a basic understanding of what machine learning is, about what artificial intelligence is, how to program. And these are things that anyone can learn. I know a lot of people say, oh, this is too hard for me, or I don't want to learn this. But I'm a really firm believer in if you want to learn something, you can learn it. Maybe you need to revise it a few more times than someone who wants to learn that thing, but you can definitely do it. Um, so I would advise students to learn as much programming as you can. Uh, maybe pick up a easy language like Python is a really easy language to learn. Um, and maybe even make your own machine learning model, which isn't, isn't too difficult actually. It's quite easy nowadays. There's a lot of tutorials online. I would suggest experimenting with uh, these technologies and just having an idea of what you can do with it. And that way in the future, if you did want to become a, an AI ethics professor, which might be a job in the future, right, right. Um, that is something you can do now because you have the skills, you can implement a machine learning program, which is a subset of AI, and then you can become a, an ethics professor to do with AI. I remember um, back in college, reading a book on behavioral economics. And one thing that always kind of stayed in my mind was that why fast food restaurants prefer plastic chairs mm -hmm. over you know, nice, cushion, comfy chairs. And it was because if they have plastic chairs, customers will eat and leave faster. Mm -hmm. They will also make sure the, the stores would have fast-paced music. Mm -hmm. so, and that will pace up people to act faster. Mm -hmm. And hearing what you tell me, what you're telling me about machine learning and as such a powerful predictor of human behavior, mm -hmm. this is, in essence, what people had done for years in the past or decades in the past. Just that we are doing in a massive scale. Mm -hmm. And also with sort of unified code and unified criteria of things. And it's something that will help us be more efficient and also move with more confidence. And I think it's filled with great new opportunities. So. Yes, I agree with you and we should learn about these and we should um, be interested in moving forward with technology because bottom line, it's something that we have we had done 
only improved mm -hmm. at a faster pace, mm -hmm. grander scale, and for our benefit. Right? Yes, I agree. Um, and if you're somewhat unconvinced about the benefits of machine learning, uh, this entire what we just talked about, uh, the sort of cliff notes I prepared to talk about this topic were generated completely by an AI machine, um, which gave me the sort of <laughs> ideas that I wanted to talk about. Um, so if you're still unconvinced, that's something for you to think about. All right. So the world is moving fast, improving fast, and we also have to be faster. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you with the next episode. Bye.